Howdy folks, welcome to Found Flicks. On this ending explained, we'll be looking at one I've gotten a bunch of you guys asking for. The Spanish film Veronica, based on a true story about a young girl who believes an evil force has attached itself to her after a seance. The movie has been billed as so scary that viewers can't finish it or even the scariest movie of all time. And while that is definitely an overstatement, Veronica is a well-made, quite spooky story from the same director as the Wreck series, which I enjoy as well. So we will be breaking down the story of Veronica, explaining what happens in the end, as well as looking at what the true story is that forms the basis of the film. Our story begins at the end of the events surrounding Veronica on the night of June 15th, 1991. We hear a frantic call from a young girl, screaming for help and saying that he is here, watching police cars heading to their location in the pouring rain. Detective Romero arrives with others to their apartment and follows a blood trail leading to a room. And whatever he sees in the room must be truly shocking based on his reaction. Looking on in horror, as we hear a girl scream, which then transitions to teenager Veronica waking up in her room three days earlier on June 12th. Despite her relatively young age, Veronica is pretty much the mother and caretaker for her three younger siblings. Her mom is there as well, but is so busy working at the bar she runs that she is usually never around or sleeping after working all night. So it's up to Veronica on her own to make sure her siblings are taken care of, which is quite a lot of responsibility to put on a 15 year old girl. It seems like this shift to her taking responsibility is tied to the death of her father. And Veronica hasn't gotten over her father's death as we soon learn, taking a photo of him from a box in her mom's closet, saying she needs it for a school project. Lies! And by the way, that looks like some damn good paella her dad made. Mm -mm. In class at a religious school, we learn that today is a particularly important day, the day of a solar eclipse, which isn't just important for that reason, but what else goes on throughout history tied to eclipses, which the teacher explains. And whenever there's a classroom scene like this in movies, you know it always ties to the story directly. Primitive cultures believed the sky reflected what happened on earth. So during an eclipse, darkness reigned over the light. With darkness in command, this seemed like the perfect time for sacrifices, the image of which causes Veronica to drift away from reality, clearly perturbed by the violent scene portrayed in the slide. While the rest of the school gathers to watch the eclipse as it begins, Veronica and her friends Rosa and Diana descend into the school's dingy basement in search of a spot to perform a seance. The original intent was to attempt to contact Diana's recently deceased boyfriend, but she didn't bring any personal effects which would help them reach out to him. But Veronica did bring that picture of her father who she is also hoping to contact. So they go forward with the seance, setting up a Ouija board and some candles, each then placing their index fingers on a glass to act as the planchette. As outside the eclipse begins, the sun starting to become covered by the moon, which as we learned in class means that darkness has taken over. As the eclipse continues, the glass jumps around on its own but all the girls swear they didn't move it. They try to question if it's Veronica's father, but all it says in return is spy. And the glass continues to fly around the board under Veronica's finger, who again swears she didn't move it. The others put their fingers back on the glass and it swirls around the board, landing on the sun. And the glass starts to get hotter and hotter, burning the girls, except Veronica, leaving her finger on the glass. As outside, the sun is completely covered by the eclipse and the glass explodes and from a cut, but Veronica bleeds right onto the sun symbol on the board as the candles blow over starting a fire. After putting it out, they discover the board has been broken right in half, one side with the moon, the other with the sun, showing us that light and dark themselves have been split apart. Even though the eclipse is over, the darkness is still here. The girls finding Veronica lying on the ground nearby, quickly whispering something. Rosa gets closer to her, hearing what she's whispering, which we later learn is, you will die today. Frightening Rosa and causing a rift between the two friends to develop, which I gotta say makes sense. Veronica then rises up, her mouth opening unnaturally large and the lights blink. Outside, the eclipse passes, the sun returning, though it already had a huge effect because after the seance and opening the door to the spirit world, Veronica has brought something back with her. By allowing the spirit to control her to move the glass, she has essentially let this evil spirit into her physical body and it is now attached to her. But of course she is completely unaware of this as she was only hoping to contact her father. Sorry, Veronica, that's what happens when you fool around with the spirit realm. After a trip to the nurse, she rejoins her sisters after school and it 
looks like at least one person can see the demon's presence attached to her. The elderly blind nun who works at the school called Sister Death by the students staring down directly at Veronica despite her being blind. And we later learn that she has had her own experience with evil spirits. Initially, the spirit makes itself known to Veronica in minor ways, like moving the backpack containing the broken Ouija board when Veronica leaves the room. Then later at dinner, Veronica tries to eat a meatball, but suddenly stops, her arms shaking, as though something is actually holding her back, until she finally forces the meatball into her mouth, still shaking as sauce dribbles down her chin. When her when sister enters the room seeing this, she drops milk onto the ground, snapping Veronica out of her daze. So it was that the spirit was actually controlling Veronica here, having temporarily taken over her physically, but only for a brief time until she comes to. When cleaning up her shirt, she sees evidence of the demon near her, noticing three claw marks on her body, a certain sign that the spirit is in fact a demon, with the mark of three being a mockery of the Holy Trinity of Christianity. The demon becomes more violent after this turning to her brother when Veronica is bathing him. She hears loud noises coming from her room and believes it's her sister's, but they are at the opposite end of the hall. When she enters, the door then shuts by itself, trapping Veronica inside, hearing Antonio screaming out that it burns. And she gets out, finding the faucet on boiling hot, steam pouring out, but he says he didn't touch the faucet. And when she apologizes, he says that it wasn't her that did it, but falls asleep before elaborating further on who he means. Later doing the dishes, we get our first appearance of the demon. The TV turns itself on behind Veronica, and when she goes to shut it off, in the reflection, we see a dark figure standing there, staring after her as she leaves. Yikes! In her room, unable to sleep, Veronica plays with a flashlight, dancing it around on a bunch of star stickers on the ceiling, the ring of the flashlight resembling the eclipse around the moon, an important recurring symbol in the movie. She then has a nightmare, waking up in the dream, the closet next to her opening itself up. It's her sisters inside, and we hear a strange voice that calls out Veronica over and over, revealing her father in the corner naked. A demonic black arm reaches out, pulling Veronica down to the bed as several more arms emerge, pinning her down. Her dad approaches her, his form dissolving away to a black faceless figure, the same seen in the reflection. And if there's any question about it possibly being her father that she contacted, this shows us this is definitely not the case, as we don't get to pick who we communicate with on the other side via a Ouija board, it's more about who is listening. And this demon took advantage of that to break through to our realm. Increasingly concerned after her nightmare, Veronica returns to the fateful basement, finding Sister Death down there waiting for her, who scolds her, knowing what she's done. But this is because she had her own experience with the other side, and this is why she blinded herself. But she learned that she doesn't need eyes to see the spirits, and can see that something has attached itself to Veronica, telling her she has to protect her siblings. Looking at the novelty encyclopedia of cult that was included with the board, she finds Viking symbols of protection and places copies of the symbols as amulets around the apartment, hoping this will keep the demon out and protect the kids. But it doesn't do much good at all, as that night the demon enters the girl's room as a shadow, passing along the walls, setting the papers ablaze. And again, it forces Veronica to stay frozen in place unable to stop it, and a black hand reaches out choking Lucia, and Veronica is free, waking her sister up, who thinks it was Veronica that was choking her, but she says she was protecting them, and explains about the demon to the kids, freaking them out even more. It reappears later, but when the door opens, it's just their mom that enters, wondering what the hell is going on here. Her mom tells her to grow up, because she's on her own, but Veronica argues that she's the one that's actually on her own which is pretty much the case here. That night, she has another disturbing dream related to all of this. Her sisters are there, proceeding to jump on the bed, saying they're hungry, then biting Veronica's arms, tearing her flesh off and giggling. Antonito joins in on the fun, choking her. Then her mom shows up as well, telling her again to grow up, a shadow reaching down Veronica's body, blood pooling out from her midsection. This is all to represent the idea of how overwhelmed she feels by constantly having to mother the kids, and how it is literally destroying her which all ties into the resolution of the film as we will see. Veronica wakes up on the morning of June 14th, still on edge from her nightmare, seeing a blood spot on her pants and stains on the bed. Somehow the demon forced Veronica to have her first period and now is technically a woman, so to speak, after going through this huge step of maturity towards adulthood. Cleaning her mattress, she discovers a black spot underneath and finds similar spots under her sibling's bed.
bed, showing us the demon has been sleeping or hiding right underneath each of them. She finds Antonito alone, sitting with a book, which she thinks is odd since he doesn't know how to read. He says that dad came to read to him and will be coming back tonight to take him where he lives. Oh boy, that's not good. It looks like time is running out for Veronica to stop the demon as tonight is the night he will be coming for them all. She speaks to Sister Death again, and she tells her there is still a chance. The only way to stop the demon is to send it back through the door she opened via the board, and then destroy the door by doing right what she did wrong. She reads that one of the main rules of using a Ouija board is to never end a seance without saying goodbye. Realizing she didn't do this, and this is why the demon stayed with her, she attempts to recruit Diana and Rosa to do another seance to complete it, but they are aren't willing to participate. Out of options, she enlists her sisters to act as the other two in the seance, and gets Antonito to draw protection symbols on the walls all around the apartment, which is probably a bit too important of a task for a clueless little boy, as he flips through the book to another page with a different symbol, this one being for invocation, specifically for summoning a demon. Well, that's probably not going to protect them at all, and it seems this innocent mistake was actually of monumental importance. Beginning the seance, the girls place their fingers on the glass over the board as before. Are you here? Veronica asks. Yes, it responds. We're here to say goodbye to you, she says, telling the demon to leave this place. The glass sliding over to no. Man, this demon guy is a real jerk. Just leave these kids alone already. Remembering another rule she didn't follow regarding saying goodbye is that all participants are supposed to sing a song or mantra together. They decide to sing a song they all know. The commercial jingle for a floor cleaning product. Product, suddenly hearing doors opening and banging all around them, getting more aggressive until the candles are blown out, along with the tape holding the damaged board together being pulled apart. The glass continues to move on its own, rolling off the board down the hall and into Veronica's room. The mattress is still turned over and a black arm emerges from the spot, trying to pull her in, seeing the same faceless figure emerging. She runs away, the lights exploding in the hall, and calls the police, the same desperate call heard at the beginning. And after giving them her address, Antonito starts wandering off, a black arm snatching him up, closing the door, sealing it, Veronica unable to get inside. Finding another way in, she breaks the glass, jumping through into the bathroom. Luckily her brother is okay, and she picks him up running back to the girls, all of them getting out of the apartment into the front doors of the building. Woo, maybe they're gonna make it out. But where's Antonito, they ask, and Veronica looks to the mirror, seeing that he's not there, forcing her to return to the apartment. But at least the girls are safe outside, as their mom makes it to them, having seen the police cars passing by her bar on their way here. Inside the apartment, things have gone absolutely mental. Veronica finding Antonito in the bathtub, pulled away by the shadowy silhouette on the curtain, which slaps Veronica, causing her to hit her head on the mirror, shattering the glass. Antonito again runs off like a fool as Veronica takes a shard of glass, walking down the hall after him. The demon appears right behind her, following her footsteps without her even knowing it. In her room, the door again closes, the shadow moving along the walls. Finding her brother hiding in the closet, she turns to a mirror, seeing quite oddly that her reflection has become separated from herself, not matching the same position of her reflection. She then flashes back to several prior events involving the demon, with her actually being responsible, then seeing the demon's reflection in her own. We are well aware at this point that the demon is attached to her, but this implies that every time we saw the the demon was actually Veronica doing it, and there was no separate demon since the demon is within her and is a part of her. Thinking that if she's dead, the demon will be gone as well, she takes the shard of glass to her throat, but is stopped by the demon, standing over her, then jamming his arm deep down her throat, choking her. At that moment, the cops arrive, tying back to the opening scene, seeing Veronica being held by an invisible force until collapsing to the ground. The police then scour the apartment, rescuing Antonito. Veronica is taken out on a stretcher, while Romero finds a picture of Veronica on the ground, and the picture turns black, her face beginning to burn away as all the lights inside suddenly turn back on, the apartment appearing back to normal, and Romero gets notified over the walkie that Veronica has passed, her death most certainly tied to why the lights came back on. At the police station, Detective Romero struggles with what to put in his official report about the case. He admits in the report that what he witnessed at the apartment was a literally 
inexplicable event, considering the only explanation for it to be paranormal. The same picture of Veronica seen earlier then unburns, returning to its normal appearance of Veronica as an innocent, smiling schoolgirl. So since Veronica is dead, does that mean that the demon is gone as well? I honestly don't think so, as she never appears to completely close or destroy the door between worlds since the board was broken in the second seance. Antonito accidentally put up the invocation symbols and the end result being that the demon kills her. If doing this would also make the demon return to the spirit realm, why would he do that? It doesn't make sense. All of this makes it seem like to me that the demon got exactly what he wanted and successfully claimed Veronica's soul. So while Veronica is gone, and with her he has lost his vessel to our world, I believe that the demon is still on our side, waiting for someone else to reach out to him and could indeed be attached to the other members of the family now. Now let's look at the true story behind the movie and how much of the film story lines up with a real life case. The overall broad strokes are the same, with some significant differences naturally. The real life Biacas case takes its name from the Madrid neighborhood where young woman Estefina Larraza performed a seance at school. A nun broke her Ouija board, interrupting the ritual, and after this she went on to experience months of seizures and hallucinations, particularly involving shadows and presences surrounding her. And just like in the end of Veronica, Estefina died, but not battling a demon, rather in a Madrid hospital hospital in August 1991. The case became popular in Spain due to it being the only time a police officer has witnessed something paranormal and included it in the report in an official capacity, which is interesting in a uniquely terrifying way. It seems that after Estefina's death, the paranormal activity actually worsened, with her parents also experiencing similar supernatural phenomena like their daughter. Most notably, as recreated in the movie, a photograph of her that inexplicably caught on fire. And when the police visited the family home after her death, they reported things like hearing a loud noise coming from an empty porch, the door of an armoire opening in a sudden and totally unnatural way, a crucified Jesus statue separated from his cross, and a large stain attributed to drool. The real facts aren't quite as spectacular as in the film. The report still declared the case a situation of mystery and rarity, and then putting it in the report goes on to explain why this case continues to mystify and intrigue people to this day. All right, guys, that'll wrap it up for my ending explained and looking at the real life story of Veronica. In case you haven't learned better after it popping up in hundreds of horror movies, don't play with Ouija boards, kids, because you never end up contacting who you want, but always some evil demon guy that wants to kill you and stuff. It's just not worth the risk. What did you guys think of Veronica and its ending? Did you think it was the scariest horror film of all time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.